I think people have psychological issues with money, and I think they like to gamble and blame someone when they don't win. So it's the equivalent of walking into a casino and you know, pulling the slot machine. And if you win, you take the money. If you lose, you blame the person at the door that waved the flyer to get you in there. That's very common. I've been in this for a long time. Remember, I wrote newsletters. Yeah. People would buy a stock from the newsletter. They wouldn't read the newsletter. Then they would complain if they lost money. Something is going to break. Don't let it be you. Okay, so that's that's what's happening right now is something is going to break in the system, in the financial system. And you don't want it to be you. That's how you need to see things. That's how I see things. Everybody prepares for the last crisis, but it's not that kind of problem. Like in 2008, if you were preparing for a tech crash, yeah. it didn't happen. You had a real estate crash. So I don't think it's the same way. I also think, I don't think it matters what it is. I think people need, you need to say, what's going on here? Mortgage rates are over seven. That's They're right. going to go to eight. Uh, the, tr the treasury curve is completely out of whack. I mean, you have the two-year note, you know, yields higher than the 10-year note. So uh, that means for people, it's dumbed this down. I mean, you can you can loan money to the government for two years and make more money than loaning and it I for 10 years. And I think that's the years. biggest. I mean, it's all these problems. Now, the tech stocks are down, some of them 50% or more. And what people need to understand is I've been in this game for, I don't know, 20-something years. And so you lose all your emotion. So I look at these stock charts and I'm, they're in death crosses. What that means is that the moving averages have crossed. You know, and what that, it's in a downtrend. So I'm like, the stocks are a downtrend. If they have a small rally, it doesn't really matter. It's in a, it's in a downtrend. What people need to understand is this is not a market. Okay, A market is where buyers and sellers or lenders and borrowers set the rates for which they exchange something. I talk about this in my book. That's a market. Okay, This is a centrally planned system. I don't want to say that, I don't want to compare it to other systems because it gets bad and you know, people take the wrong idea, but centrally planned means we sit around and wait for, for the bankers, the, the Ministry of Economic Truth or something to tell us what the next <laughs> thing, you didn't go back to the 70s, Arthur Burns Fed, nobody would have ever seen all the Fed governors talking on television and Twitter and giving speeches and these people are like media celebrities. I mean, you turn Bloomberg on it at two o'clock, we'll have this one and this one and this one. They're talking all the time. What that means is there's a centrally planned thing going on, okay? And you're sitting around with bated breath waiting for them to tell you that prices went up or whatever. This is all nonsense. They're going to raise interest rates until something cracks and gives them some sort of leverage that they're looking for on the world stage doesn't matter what that is it's not you okay if you're sitting in tulsa in a recliner you know with your 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 webull account or something look you need to you need to dial it back a little bit okay it doesn't matter which bank it is that crashes you need to worry about you okay the dollar is ripping higher all right there's people that have to roll over debt and all these this is a huge problem people are starting out with a disadvantage they're confused they never go into silence they never have five minutes in a room by themselves, quiet, to just settle down. They have to be stimulated all the time, and then they start panicking. And they've just done everything that they've been told to do, and, and they've been in the real estate boom, and the tech stocks, and it's just very confusing for people. So, so I would try to go with the flow. I mean, you can't go and educate yourself in a day. I mean, there's nobody has an answer. Guys like Rick, like Rick is a very smart guy, but I've spent a lot of time with him. Like, Rick has been studying this stuff for a long time. You know, and I've been doing, I tried to tell someone the other day, I've been spending my weekends and nights right. reading right. and studying for right. 25 years. Right. I must have read hundreds of thousands of pages and written 2 million plus words. What were you doing during that time? If you were watching the Yankees or something, that's nice, that's nice. But don't expect that you can understand. I said in my newsletter that, that in 2016, that eight year presidential cycle, the debt would double. You know, it went from 18 trillion, it's 31 trillion now. It's never gonna stop. It's never gonna come down. Forget about it. It's never gonna come down. You're never gonna stop this central bank intervention. Okay, you're gonna have, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. And people try, try to hang with me here, because I know this sounds confusing, but it's not. You're gonna have yield curve control. The Japanese are already doing it, okay? The British are already doing it. You're seeing some headlines about this. What that means is, is they're gonna fix the price of interest along the yield curve. They're gonna basically set it and let the market mess with it, but they're gonna cap it at certain levels. The Japanese have capped their 10 year at 25 basis points, and they're printing unlimited money to defend that. And everybody's saying, yeah, surely that can't work. It's gonna work great, believe me. They're gonna set the price of money, 
and they're going to defend the price of money because they have ultimate control of the money because it's not a market. It's a bunch of guys sitting and girls in suits telling you about economics and you're waiting for them, you know, like dogs waiting for their owner to come home to see what the next interest rate fix is going to be. This is a fix. Remember, it's not set by people loaning money. It's fixed. Okay, so that's what people, once you see that, it's a lot less confusing. Because if you're living this confused digital lifestyle where you're just responding to each yeah. thing they tell you to do, you're never going to get ahead of this. So. Personally, for, for me, uh, I sold a lot of real estate earlier this year, and uh, I bought treasury bills. I'm still buying a lot of treasury bills. Uh, I, I have the gold royalties, which I'm really happy with, because I, I'll tell you something about gold. Nothing's more comforting than holding gold in your, in your hands. I mean, it's really wild how you feel as a person with that. Gold royalties are even better because you have, you know, Mattel has got 90, 80 something, I don't know how many we even have, but but less than 100. And you have these things forever and you don't pay any money to drill into all this stuff. And, it, and people read my book, it doesn't matter what the gold price does. It, the gold price is down 8% this year. People are acting like they're so disappointed. Netflix is down like 50%. I mean, are you crazy? Yeah. So, so in the gold, nobody, there's no liability. It doesn't matter. And the price is set in the futures market. The futures market sets the price. You know, like when the Ukraine situation happened and gold went to 2070, I noticed that 41 million ounces changed hands on the comics in one day. That's an entire year's worth of supply. So there's no way that Barrick Gold and everyone decided in one day to sell a whole year's of the supply. So you have this, this is what sets the market. Now let's Let's, let's compare it by talking about oil because, because uh, Saudi Arabia has been very upset with the fact that the paper market sets the oil price and has been very outspoken about the fact that they aim to challenge the fact that New York sets the... So why don't we just look at that and say, okay, this is the trick works in every commodity market. How long is it going to work in gold? Who cares? Really? Who cares? I mean, in my book, I talk about how much gold to own. Very little. If you have three or four percent gold or something, it's kind of a lot of gold. I mean, I'm sleeping very well, by the way. I mean, I've had like very little disturbance in my life and I encounter these people that are in a panic and I'm thinking, I don't know what you're doing, but you're not doing anything that I'm doing because you seem frazzled. The thing is, is that is that the energy prices are going to go up. You know, the oil price is going to go up. The, that, that's going to happen. And the energy companies are interesting investments. You know, I've bought them for my kids. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very positive on some of the major American energy producers because the, the cost of producing energy is going to go higher because there's no new supply. Yeah. There's no investment in yeah. supply. You know, it's the same with gold. But the problem is with gold is that you don't put it in your gas tank every day. So on this subject, I just wanted to say something that I find very interesting is that there was, I don't want to get these numbers wrong, but between 2009 and 19, the the hydrocarbon energy portion of the energy mix went from 80 and a half percent to 79 and a half. So it went down by one percent, even though we invested two and a half trillion in the green energy transition. It's very real, by the way. The green energy trend, I'm very close to that transition is happening. But you still need a lot of oil. You need lots and lots of oil, and you're going to need lots of oil for a long time. And and you, where are you going to get the oil? So it's really interesting to me. And gold is is to me is very similar because you have this worldwide market and there's the producers have been suffering with no investment for years and years and years and it just doesn't have some of the same dynamics because you don't consume it every day. The US realizes you keep this dollar moving a little bit longer and these guys are going to be really ready to what I call kiss the ring which means I'll do whatever you, you say. That's what that's a lot of power. So the US everybody talks about the US is going to yeah. rank Maybe, maybe. I mean, eventually everything breaks. That, that's the truth of life is that nothing is permanent, okay? So eventually the U.S. breaks. Back in the 70s, we know now that there were times when there was explicit fighting and implicit agreement mm -hmm. on certain things. I mean, you had grain, you had all these things that happened in yeah. the 70s. People don't really remember these things, but there's great books about them. So I don't know when you take gold, for example, or, or you take the oil situation, the U.S. is trying to cap Russian oil prices, but then it can't cap them because OPEC's now not going to produce as much, and then the price goes up and the strategic reserve is down. It's very complicated. So you don't know what's being, what everybody's good with, what they're not good with. The Russians have a lot of gold. They produce a lot of gold. They produce a lot of oil. They produce a lot of resources. And uh, they have, 
a somewhat interesting economic system that's not leveraged, it's very difficult to say what they're really up to.